Well, I want to wish everybody a happy Monday. All right. I like to say happy Monday because, you know, there are a lot of people out there that don't like Mondays. I happen to like Mondays for one very important reason. Um, I get to interview people, very, very special people on a, uh, on a very happy Monday. And normally I just go right into, you know, telling you all about my guests. But before I do that today, I'm going to say this, okay? God, you know, the, uh, people, you hear people say that God works in mysterious ways, okay? And of course, that's not in the Bible, but the bottom line is they say God works in mysterious ways, and he truly works in mysterious ways in my life because, you know, the lifestyle that I lead, okay, is like a nonstop between the radio station and between family and grandchildren and, and everything that goes on in my life. Um, I really, something came to me. Okay, uh, my guest actually with what she does came to me um, kind of unexpectedly, but when I saw what it was, and I, I sat back in my chair and I said, <laughs> "Thank you, God, because <laughs> you really sent me someone you know that is like an answer to a prayer." Because what my guest does, okay, is help people with regards to exactly situations like what I'm going through right now, which is, I'll call it this, life. We all go through life. And sometimes, you know, we see everything that's going around us in the world today, everything that's going around us in our own personal space today, and we need something. We need that type of release valve that allows us to come back to the center where we need to be in our life. So with that being said, let me tell you about my guest today. Her name is Diane Calabrese. She was a practicing recreational therapist for over 30 years. She holds a master's degree in science and healthcare policy and management and a bachelor's degree of science in therapeutic recreation. Now, more recently, uh, she has continued her education, getting certificates in very various holistic healing modalities. And I'm going to ask her to define modalities too, but I'll tell you what it says in a minute. Okay. So that is say that's her passion. She's worked in many diverse healthcare settings. Uh, she's an adjunct professor for the Florida International University and her background in healthcare management is just speaks for itself. Uh, she's an experienced professional uh, in writings. Um, she's done cable interviews. She's done podcasts. She's done YouTube. She's all over social media, folks. And I want to welcome to the show, Diane Calabrese. Good morning, Diane. How are you? Good, good morning, Eric. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm uh, very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Take me back to the early days of Diane. All right. When you were younger, when you first got started, did you see yourself where you are now? Tell me about the early no. days of Diane. <laughs> Go ahead. So let's talk about the no, early days. Go ahead. So tell me about I, the early I, I was I always wanted to be um, in healthcare, but um, you know, sometimes like when you're young and, and you're going to college when you're eighteen, like picking a major, you're not quite sure what you want to do, but I always knew it was in healthcare. So I came across recreational therapy when I was working at Brunswick Hospital. I was an admitting clerk, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, somebody had told me about that. So I ended up going to St. Joseph's, and um, I became a recreational therapist. And it's funny because, you know, I didn't even really know at that point if that's really what I wanted to do. Um, but the field, like, is so diverse. Like, you can, you know, tune into things that, like, resonate with you more. Like, recreational therapy is like their techniques, or you could call it modalities, that um, you use in therapeutic sessions to enhance a person's physical health, spiritual health, mental health, um, and just to, you know, bring um, leisure opportunities to them that they didn't feel that they could participate in anymore because of a physical disability, a mental disability. Um, so really what recreational therapy is is modifying activities so the patient can stay involved in the activities so a lot of it um you kind of like have to have something in your back pocket because everybody everybody's disability is different so um you have to kind of do that assessment on the patient and then um you just see what will work and what wouldn't work and and sometimes it's just a matter of pre preference for the patient because a lot of times you know, you have some an idea for a group because most most recreational therapists work in groups. Not it's not individuals, but sometimes it is. 
so um, you have to do something that would work for the whole group, you know, um, especially when working in mental health, you know, like if they have a, like a group therapy session or whatever, you want to see what activity would work. And, and for some, they love art and some of them like, you know, um, aquatic activities and, you know, for some people they like music. So it's, and as a recreational therapist, you want to, like, kind of offer different groups throughout the week when they're in program just to see what works for them to help them with, with coping skills. So later on, you know, it's like holistic healing modalities really haven't become popular um, until, like, maybe 10 years ago. Um, it was more, like, I, I think it was more in California. They they did more meditation and yoga. And, like, on I'm in New York, so... I mean, it became a little bit more, especially more popular at least five years ago. Um, but it's a relatively new trend on on this side of uh, the United States, on the east coast of the United States. But um, when I started taking the certifications for each one, um, you know, I, meditation really resonated with me most. You know. Um, and I, you know, I always got feedback from the patients. They liked the sound of my voice when I was in meditation, when I was doing a meditation. So, you know, I figured I would do that more with, you know, more my talent. And I would stick with like our programs and things like that too. Um, where it's funny, like some therapists, they, they like to do more of the physical activities. Um, so, you know, there's different techniques in holistic healing. There's so many. So I wrote a book, like my book, focuses on all of them or a lot of them where some people are just focused on one technique like yoga or um, you know meditation or Reiki my book has like a chapter devoted to each one just to see um, just to give people options of what they would be most comfortable with I see. because some people are yeah, they're not always comfortable with a certain technique over another, you know. Right, like when somebody came, to, we had yeah. we had somebody in the studio one time that was doing Reiki, you know, and I'm like, is she going to touch me? <laughs> you know, yeah. you know? <laughs> and she goes, no, no, I'm just going to hold my hands over you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, but it's like, so, you know, I yeah, see what I see. don't like to be touched, so I yeah. that's, that's funny, because, but it's true. Yeah, it's it so is true. true. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people fear it, you know, so... You, you, I want to talk. I, I, I want to. I just want to say, I, with regards to recreational therapy, I have a uh, my cousin who I grew up with, as you know, from the time I was like born, has cerebral palsy, and uh, he's currently, you know, he's in the Mary Haven settings here in, in Long Island. But you, you, I was told years ago that with David, if you told him to go down the street, make a left, and make a right, he couldn't do it. He couldn't get that that way of you know of of knowing where he was and knowing how to get around. But with regards to music. If there's anything in the 50s or the 60s with regards to music, this man can tell you who did it, when they did it, how they did it. You know, so it's like what you're saying before is everybody has that one specific thing, yeah. you know, that, that, that they enjoy. And David's thing, you know, they call him DJ Dave, you know, and uh, wherever he goes, oh. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, people yeah. rely on him for the music for the music and they and the other yeah. you know residents love it you know that when he plays like that so i didn't mean to interrupt i'm sorry i just wanted yeah. to share that with you oh it's okay i work with veterans um my, that was my last job at the va medical center in northport yep. and um they loved music i mean you could never go wrong with music yep. you know yep um and it's funny how they do remember everything you know from their era you know yep um, well music most, triggers most music m- music even with the station mu- a lot of people tell me that because we're playing songs that they don't play on the radio anymore. So a lot of times the music that hits, I'm getting messages from people going, wow, you brought back a memory, either be bad or a good, needless to, you know, whatever it is. Music can trigger the mind to bring you back to a time that either you want to be at or you don't want to be at. But the bottom line is music. Yeah. It's definitely a therapy. True. It's definitely a therapy. True. So So you, you yeah. went through all this, and uh, then it came to a point where we were talking about um, going from the recreational therapy point of this into becoming an author okay and then getting into uh the meditations and 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 things like that so take me from there at that point um yeah i recently became like i wrote i wrote two books and and it was one was done in um in uh 2021 and then 
um, the meditation book I just did um, this year. Right. Um, I retired from the VA um, last year. Um, so I had an occupational disability. I had a couple of injuries. So I still wanted to put myself out there, you know, being that I'm only 53 and I still want to work with patients. But um, that kind of job is a little bit more physical. So I figured, ah, I always liked, liked writing, you know. And as a recreational therapist, we always – had to be uh, fresh with ideas like we had to be very creative and so we were always constantly writing anyway um, and coming up with like programs or you know different activities that we could do and a lot of it was discussion groups and different topics that we could discuss so I ended up using my first book I put it all down like in um, my book like I devoted a chapter like I said to a different technique or you could call it a modality and um that's that's really how I created the book. So my, my material was already there because I had already been doing this for years. So I'm like, I should just put it into a book. And that's how I had the idea to do that. And um, my second book, I just got creative and I started writing my own meditations because um, it is it was my favorite activity to do. Um, and if I had to pick one that I was best at, I would, I would say guided, guided meditation. Um, but, uh, so that's what I, what I'm doing. And I, and I had, I didn't only put it in the book. I also did an audio book and I had it recorded. So I have like a CD of it too, which is, I think that's, um, yeah, in, in, to in, in today's yeah. world, in today's world, the audio book world, that's like audible is so popular because people don't have time to, you know, they, they find they don't yeah. have time. It's not like my grandfather who used you know, who used to sit peacefully in his chair you know, and with just with a book in his hand and be able to read. You know, a lot of people, everybody's in that rush mode. The two books that she's talking yeah. about, the two books that she's talking about, first off, Mind, Body, Spirit, and Discovering Purpose of Life. And then, of course, the second book, Meditations for the Mind, Body, Spirit. But I, I want to I get to the ears of my listeners because when I said, when I started this, when we started talking, um, I really, when I saw the words Purpose of Life, Diane, it really hit home for me, okay, because, you know, know, I'm 61, all right, I'm 61 years old, I consider myself still young, all right, I don't feel old, I don't feel, um, you know, like my life is over, I have, you know, I've just became a great-grandfather, I have grandchildren, I have kids, we have a big family, Uh you know, everything is, you know, yeah, but Linda and I, between my wife and I, we're like the Brady Bunch, I kid around, I tell everybody we're the Brady Bunch from hell, but (laughs) but we we have nine. Aww. The oldest is 40. Oh, the younger, wow. Yeah, the oldest is 40. The youngest is 12, 13 grandchildren, two great grandchildren, another another great grandchild on the way today. And he, she's in labor and delivery right now yeah. as we speak. But oh, the thing is, wow. yeah, so, so bless you. yeah, so that's that's, uh, that's Tierney out there in Pennsylvania. And uh, she was all yeah. excited this morning. She texted me and she said, uh, I'm going in. I said, all right, let's get this over oh. with so we can start on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but yeah. seriously, with regards oh, to the, the book so I want to talk, the book I want to tell my listeners about, first off, is The Mind, Body, Spirit, and Discovering Purpose of Life. Because as mm-hmm. Diane says, she says, no matter whether you're rich or poor, whether you're sick or in good health, no matter what your upbringing was, whatever your childhood experiences were, whatever you endured, here's the Here's the here's my focal point. You are not alone. You have never been alone. Okay. And this statement, all right, this statement that I'm going to say now, okay, whether it alienates you or whether it 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 sucks you in or whether you find, you know, you're whatever it is, all right. We have to remember that we are all children of God. We have unique personal experiences and encounters in life, but we all came from the same universal life force and energy that is God. And I love that statement. I thought that was, the, you know, when I saw that, I said, this is oh, a know. great <laughs> book. <laughs> and, for those of you, oh, you. and for those of you out there, you know, that are searching and saying, you know, how many times do you wake up in the morning and go, oh, what is my purpose? What am I doing? You know, I'm so disgusted with my life. Oh my Lord. You know, it, that book in itself, the purpose of life. All right. I think, um, helps you find peace and that's what I needed in my life. That's number one. Okay. Now, now the meditations for mind, body, and spirit, let's talk about meditations. Tell everybody, because a lot of people, when they think about meditations, they picture a 60s, long, blonde-headed girl sitting there with flowered jeans on, with her legs crossed, with a guitar in her hand, and singing, you know, Peter, Paul, and Mary songs. All right? But that's not the case. <laughs> so let, let's talk about meditations. Yeah. Can you tell everybody, basically, what is 
meditation because a lot of people don't truly have, I think, a true grasp or an understanding of exactly what meditation is. So if you can help them with that, that would be great. Sure, sure. Um, meditation is just quieting the mind so you can relax yourself. And lots of times I know it is hard. So I, in, when I start out with patients in, in the VA and, when, and even doing it on, on my own, just learning to breathe right, just breathing in through your nose and exhaling through your mouth and just concentrating on your breathing because what happens is we have so many distracting thoughts in our mind that um, it's very hard for us to relax. You know, there's so much going on in life and we're just because of social media and, and the way the world it is that it's so busy that we we don't have that time to quiet the mind and that's why there's so much anxiety in the world. So we need to to do that. So um, another uh, meditation is just doing a brief mantra meditation, which is just saying like the words like let it go, just just focusing on those words and just repeating it just so you can just breathe, relax, and just like let things go, let everything release. So meditation is just trying to relax your body, you know, um, trying to stay focused on what your goal is or your intention. So when I start a med- meditation in a group, I always tell the patient, you know, set an intention for healing. It could be anything. It could be just um, to reduce stress. It could just be to let go of any anger or frustration that you might have, um, any financial worries. Just you know, set an intention to just let that go, to just be with you, be with nature and peace for a while. And um, it's hard at first, but the more you do meditation, the better you get at it. So um, that's why there's different stages of meditation. So the first stage is just to really quiet the mind. Um, The second stage is to, you become a little bit more focused. You're able to get rid of those distracting thoughts. And the third stage People say that they actually feel like light, like like they're floating around the room. They yes. can really get into a deep meditation. Absolutely. So that's hard to do, but that's the, the goal. <laughs> medit- the mind is so powerful. It really is. And I'll, I'll share this with you. It um, is. I, I went to the VA, I, I, and when I came out of the military, I went to the VA. And at points in time years ago in my life, I was suffering from panic attacks. I mean, I would be up. It would be like mm-hmm. 3 o'clock in the morning. I would jump out of bed. And, and my wife scared the hell out of Linda. And, you know, next thing you know, I'm in the car. I take me to the ER. I'm having a heart attack, you know, anxiety, you know. And yeah. it was just a matter of getting in the car and feeling the air on my face and, and calming myself down. But I went to the VA, and what they did, they, put, they sent me over to psychiatry. And uh, she, oh, I'm going I'm to prescribe some medication for you. I said, well, I'm really not a pill user. I'm not into medication. I said, is there a group or someone I can talk to? No, take the medication for right now. You'll be fine. And out the door I went. Mm-hmm. All right. And um, yeah. as long as I had that pill bottle in my hand, I was fine. I didn't have to take it. My wife would say to me, are, are the pills in the car? Are they in the glove compartment? Yeah, they're there. Okay, we can go. All right, good. But the bottom line was in doing meditation and reading, I am the type of person where I have to do my own research. So I started reading all about, you know, panic attacks and anxiety. And it was one thing that caught my attention. It was a book. Um, and the woman said in the book, she said, when you're dealing with this, she said, you need to count to 10, calm your mind, close your eyes and say to yourself, this too shall pass. And, right. and what it was, right. was when I did that, when I started doing that, and the reason I'm saying this to you guys out there is because I'm trying to show you with regards to what Diana is talking about and my own experience out there, when I read that, okay, and I started practicing that, and I put that into my daily life cycle of dealing with anxiety and everything like that, it has now probably been almost 12 years. I have not had a panic attack. My anxiety is nil. You know, every once in a while, what I call normal daily anxiety, but the bottom line is nothing like what it was. I didn't need the right. me- I didn't need the medication, and I'm not telling you not to take your pills. That's not what I'm saying. If you have a doctor doing it, right. I'm not a medical doctor. Take your pills. But the bottom line is if you can get into meditation, if you can uh, be able to understand what you're dealing with in your life and be able to have something, a tool, which this book is that tool, Meditation for Mind, Body, Spirit, to be able to uh, alleviate daily stress, to alleviate your tensions. That And it is called, and Diane defines it as toxic energy, okay? And the meditations, right. the way she did this, is a way of letting go. 
And that's what I did. I let go of what was internally destroying me. All right. So for those of you out there that have never thought about it, I want you to stop and think about this. What about just taking a moment of your time and your daily life cycle to be able to do meditation? Correct? Am I right on that, Diane? Right. Right. I talk. Do I talk to? I talk too much, don't I? Boy, I should be on the radio. I was just going to add. You know, it's so true because anxiety. We used to we used to chuckle. Some of the nurses and I, we would say the only difference between us and the patients is our coping skills, and and that's what I used to tell the patients because, you know, it's once you have coping skills to cope with anxiety or mental stress or whatever you're going through you'll be fine. It's yes. just a matter of your coping skills. And we all have, all have anxiety. Nobody's different from anybody else. It's just a matter of how we cope with it. Absolutely. And um, for sometimes, you know, like meditation works for one, yoga might work better for somebody else or art or music. So there's so many different ways that we can um, alleviate, alleviate that stress. So, um, yes. you know, so it's important. I used to do these worksheets with um, patients one of the things and I would go through all leisure activities just to, cause sometimes they don't even think about activities that they might be interested in or wanted to try. So we would go through these in groups and then they would kind of identify with what they liked. And so that could help them with coping once they left the um, program or the hospital. So um, that was the point. That's where we came in. <laughs> I think a big thing <laughs> too, you see, you see a lot of yeah. times like, You'll see the recreational, um, I don't want to call it recreational therapy, possibly that's what it is, in, in nursing homes or in, in assisted living facilities. Oh, yeah. Because you get a lot of the um, people that are living there that are, you know, they might, you know, depression is there, you know, sickness is there and things like that. And when, when, we've, when I've been in the nursing home or when I've been in the assisted living facility and I see these people doing group activities, I mean, I've seen people doing calisthenics from wheelchairs. And loving it with big smiles, right. on their, big, big smiles on their faces. Yeah, you know, and uh, yeah. it's, it's so yeah. important. It truly is. Yeah. The books. Yeah, I used to do. Um, I used to do chair yoga with the nursing home patients chair as yoga. well as, um, you know, the elderly, and it, it does work. I mean, you could do everything in a chair, like light stretching, and it's it's just as an effect as effective. You know, mm-hmm. I had um like with my injury, I was in physical therapy, and um, they taught me a lot of you know, adaptive exercises to do. And um, it, the key thing is to get your joints moving because you're, if you become stiff and like don't do, you know, move at all your joints, um, it blocks you're, off the you're done. fluid in there. <laughs> you're done. You're, you're done. Yeah. You, you become stiff. And so actually from moving, you're building up that fluid in your joints, which makes you feel better and it releases the pain. Absolutely. So. That's, so you have to do something. Yep. I do a five mile run in my car. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, Walking is good. <laughs> I don't know. Let me tell you something. Do you, do, you see, do you see the amount of people out there, even in my neighborhood? The amount of husbands, wives, mm-hmm. couples, kids that are doing walking now that is just like even Linda mm-hmm. and I, you know, uh, we we like yeah. to just get out and just take a walk. It's, first off, it's good for the mind. I tell you, there's going to be a lot of anxiety. Yeah. There's, Diana, there's going to be a lot of anxiety out there today. There's going to be a lot of tension out there, and I'll tell you one of the biggest reasons right now. Twitter is down. <laughs> Right? Oh no! <laughs> yes, Twitter <laughs> is down. Like yeah. Friend, oh yes, it's all over <laughs> yeah. the news. Twitter is down, and you know what? And the reason I'm saying that is because we, as a people, rely on social media so much. All right, between Facebook, LinkedIn, Alignable, Twitter, all the different things that are out there, all the different sites that you're on, all the different things that you're doing all right. day long. What if all of a sudden they weren't there? And that's what happened, you know. And that's I why, and, and people have so much anxiety over that and everything like that. So. Um, the reason I'm bringing that up is just as an example, guys. And it's like, think about it for a second. We're relying on Facebook. Now, everybody thinks Facebook is God's gift to reality. But in reality, Facebook is just a website. Twitter, Twitter, right. okay? Twitter is just a website. All these things that we value in our life that allow us to communicate and to be able to live our daily lives are all simply yeah. just websites. And that's what we're relying on. And we have to rely on ourselves, okay? And that's what right. these two books between... I'm going to tell you the titles of the books again. It's Mind, Body, Spirit, and Discovering the Purpose of Life. That's number one. That was the book that was written prior, years ago. And now, of course, the book is Meditations for the Mind, Body, Spirit. Now, here's the thing. The book, Meditations for Mind, Body, Spirit, are author-written meditations. And as you can hear, 
Um, she definitely has experience in the field and knows what she's doing, and it's to help you, okay? Um, you, as she says, are God's precious gift to the world, and there is nothing more beautiful than a soul, which is us, in a state of peace. That's what it's about. Are you at peace? If you're not at right. peace, you need to get the book. You need to get both books. You need. And now I'm going to ask her. I know you have. You have. Tell us about your social media. How can people reach out to you if they want to uh, find out oh. more? Yeah, and I, I hate to I say that because you just heard what I said. I'm telling everybody not to rely on social media, but in today's world, we have to. So, how can people reach out to you? Um, I have uh, a YouTube channel, so if they want to uh, listen to some meditations with a video, mm -hmm. um, they're more than welcome to. Um, all they have to do is Google my name, and they'll find me, um, Diane Calabrese, and it should come up. Um, I'm also under Mind Body Spirit Books under Facebook mm -hmm. and. Um, Diane Patricia, 69, on, um, uh, that's my, the year I was born, that's why I used 69, but um, that was, that, that's on uh, Instagram. Okay. And then also my website, uh, www.dianehalabrese.com is my website, and um, I actually have all my social media links on the website. Mm -hmm. um, if they scroll through each of the icons, they could find me. Um and they could always, you know, you know, um, message me um, any questions. I have the CD. I sell the CD, uh, audio CD, on Etsy, but I also sell it on my website. And um, both of my books you can buy to Balboa Press off my website. But it's also on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. Um, you know, um, Walmart. Very, very accessible. It's in and. They're also going to be in the Hay House catalog. So. Well, wow, cool. uh, Meditations is already in there. So they, but, uh, now Hay House, I, I believe. Just did a Hay House is the religious. I, just, I think it's religious booking books and such like that. I've seen Hay House out there, so that's yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. applaudable. So it's, it's all about like holistic healing yep. and yeah. Absolutely. I want uh, you to write me a medi yeah. I want you to write a meditation. Right here's what I want. I want you to write a meditation, and I want to I want to do the voice. <laughs> okay. Take, I want to, I want. To, you can. You, you need yeah. to. I, let me Everything, here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try out you for you right. Train yourself. I'm gonna try out for you right now. Here, so it would be something like, sit and find yourself at peace. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> Good. <Perfect. laughs> there you That's go. <laughs> All right. So once again, the website Diane D I A N E Calabrese C A L A B R E S E dot com. Now, here's the other thing. You can get links if you go to the iradiousa.com page and you click on the last morning. Last, oh, last American DJ Morning Show, all right? You can get the link there, okay? These are two books that need to be in your library and they need to be read, number one, number two. Number three, the, the YouTube channel that she has, the audio books that she has. You have no excuse out there for not being and taking advantage of this, okay? Here's the thing. If you're happy with the way things are going right now and you have no peace in your life and you're stressed and you have that toxic energy and you're going every day and you're looking for an answer and that answer isn't coming, hey, this is, you know, what do I have to do? Take the book and hit you in the head? This is the answer. This is what you need to be focusing on, okay? You have plenty of time in your life to go to work, to deal with your kids, to deal with your grandchildren, to have fun, do all this stuff, but you need to take time for yourself. And that's what meditation is all about, taking time for yourself, clearing your mind, because here's the deal. Once you clear your mind and you get rid of that toxic energy and you get rid of what's bothering you and everything like that, you're going to find peace and things get easier. That's what it's all about, making it easier. We're on this planet for a short period of time. Make it the best time that you possibly can. And Diane Calabrese, with her books, with her YouTube videos, and everything that she's doing is that tool that's going to help you get there. So, Diane, now I'm going to ask you for final thoughts. What would you like to say? What are you going to say to everybody else that's listening out there? What do you want to say to everybody? Um, I just want to reiterate you're not alone. God is always with you. Um, just Keep praying and meditate and, and never doubt yourself. Always trust your instincts. Your intuition is your best friend. So always listen to that intuition. But think positive, not negative. It's Go like, through the positive path. <laughs> it's like Rodney Danger. And Rod stay away from. Yeah, it's like Rodney yeah, Dangerfield. And stay away from any negative en energies. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield, he goes. He go of... Rodney Dangerfield, he goes. Hello? He goes, do you ever hear that voice in your head? He goes, hello, little voice. <laughs> you know? And, <laughs> and that's what it is. We got, that, we got that little voice in our head. Normally, that little voice that's talking yeah. to us, whether you think it's whatever it might be in your life, that little voice matters. It truly does. 
So it does. It, it truly does. does. It leads you in the right direction. <laughs> Absolutely, it really does. I say, I say, my mom passed away at fifty-six from lupus, mm. and I and I tell everybody oh, all the time. God. I tell everybody all the time. I said, that little voice in my head. I hear her going, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever yeah. I hear that, Eric, I go, okay, Mom, I got you. I understand. <laughs> you know, I get it. <laughs> Diane, once again, I it's... I kind of feel like that for my dad, too. Yeah. <laughs> my dad passed away, too. I hear him whispering uh, yeah. to me, too, once in a while. <laughs> it's, it's funny how things... But... It's funny how when you are able to relax and clear your mind, how things become more clearer in your life, and you see things and, and put uh, things that might not necessarily you find being rational, all of a sudden... The yeah. what is not looking rational becomes rational in your mind, and 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 it helps. It truly does. So once again, DianeCalabrese.com. Yeah. Diane, um, you and I are going to be talking a lot more. What I'd like to do is invite you, uh, like maybe on a monthly basis, if you can come on the morning show and maybe just talk about a specific topic, or maybe you know something that can help somebody um, just get through their day. You know, and I'm going to invite you on, and sure. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot That's your emails good. about that, and. Uh, so once again, the books, guys, you got to pick them up. All right, you got to get the books. All right, the books are important. Mind, body, spirit, and discovering the purpose of life, and also meditations for the mind, body, spirit. And also go to her website, dianecalabrese.com. Go to her YouTube channel and take advantage of everything that this wonderful woman and this wonderful author and this wonderful person is doing. Diane, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. <laughs> and it was great. And like I said when I started, I really needed I really needed what you have and what you did and what you're doing. So thank you. Aww. Thank you. You're All right. Welcome. Thank you. All right. So you're listening to me. This is Eric Martin Koppelman. I am the last American DJ. And the reason I call myself that is because I say what I want to say. I play what I want to say right here on WAIR Digital Broadcast Radio for Long Island. We are an iRadio USA station. All right. Hey. It's Monday, and like I say, it's all about attitude. If your attitude sucks, your whole day is going to suck. Don't make your day suck. Change your attitude. It may even change your life.